techniques, techniques that we're going to cover now, once again, different situations. What if you're walking up the stairs, the guy's coming down the stairs, you're on a staircase. Can't kick and punch on a staircase. Can't throw on a staircase. As much as you hear about ground grappling and how ultimate it is to you get a man down and choke him out a thousand times for 15 minutes, you can't stay on those stairs and do any ground grappling. You got to have to understand once again, you got to take what you get and work from there. This is why I hope you're starting to see that no one art, no one style, no one anything is superior. Not in this society that we live in. You got to be well rounded. So we're going to take the scenario where the man walking down the stairs with a banister. You have a banister. You're coming up the stairs, the man coming out. Yo, yeah. give me a show you man give pushes me you over the banister. First, the move, man. first thing you want to do is try to get your balance. After here, you start to talk to this guy. Oh, man, we don't see you. Yeah, he got that choke on. How are you going to move this man from here? When you get this, you can shove a thumb in his eye. Possible. Come underneath and circular motion. Get your hand to a choke ball quickly. He's going to try to come off with a punch. You slip yourself in. What we call the devil's handshake. Have him right there within the throw, and then proceed to either walk this man down the stairs or how you feel, throw him down the stairs. The choice is yours. Walk yeah, I do it, sir. Yo. No. So, first thing you do, you want to grab your balance. Remember, circular motion. You can't punch, because the guy will just throw you over the banister. You hear? He's like, oh, no, no, calm down, calm down, calm down. You can tell him that your money is in, is in your pocket. He may be stupid enough to let go of your throat and then go for your money in your pocket. Now you have an opportunity here. But if the man is any kind of a decent robber, he'll understand that he's not going to let go of the main hole that he has, which is the choke hole. Now that you're off here and he's pushing you like this, circular motion. This hand he don't have control over. Circular motion into the throat. Push with all, all your body weight back. Get that, hand, get that hand around the throat. Lock it in. Push it in. Head button. Lock it to what we call a devil's handshake. As he's here from here, just twist and turn your body and throw this man down them stairs. If you want to, then you can walk him, but in the heat of the battle, whatever happens, happens. Okay, now we're going to work that same technique slightly different and utilize, once again, what we have to us. A good self-defense person will understand if there's a garbage can next to you, hit him with a trash can. You can pick up a bottle, hit him with a bottle. Whatever's around you, you got to constantly be aware in the heat of the battle what you can use, what you can pick up at that precise second of moment to use to help you out, to aid you. It's not about fighting. The art of self-defense is defending oneself, getting out of there as quick as possible. Don't play no game. Don't let your ego and stuff get caught up with you where you start to stay there and fight. It's not about fighting. Defend oneself. Watch this technique. Now, the same scenario where he walked up, he choked you. You're over the banister. Now, you may decide to throw blows. Once you got that balance broken from here, utilize that knee strike. Turn the body over. Shift the body weight so you're in a semi-arm bar. Grab by the ankles and then run down the stairs and then start to drag this person backwards down the stairs. I'll show it to you with a little bit of flow. Sometimes with the strike, you may throw a combination of strikes. I mean, you may repeatedly strike and you'll just keep on blocking. And as you keep on blocking, when you get his attention high, pull. Then you use the knee strike or bam, you use the knee strike and then go from there into the arm bar motion. Watch it again. Okay, now here's the scenario now. Once again, judo, like I said before, the art of choking people out and throwing, excellent. If you can use it, great for close quarter because everyone has to breathe. People, this is an excellent time, excellent position, and if you can get to a person's throat to choke them out, it will stop them from moving around a lot and it'll help you effectively and safely make it out of that situation. Show you what I'm talking about to try to illustrate this, okay? You're walking up again, man, shoves you, pins you to the back, and yeah, now he starts to lay into you, starts to punch you in your face. As you're going, you push over, slip the hand, get that man, get behind him, grab that choke, throat right here, hold it, choke him out. Don't stand up, because if you stand up, he has leverage to try to throw you. When you're here, you're sitting up, he has no leverage. Use your leg to kick his legs out while you move down the stairs effectively here and then choke this man. Take him out until you're on the lower level and then here, take all the wind out of him. Use the solid wall to bash his face in once he's out. And then you push and then you can move from that point and you're gone. 
if you try to choke him out while he's standing, he can throw you a twist and turn, and both of you are going down the stairs. This is why you make sure you sit. Sit back. If he brings his legs up, use your legs to kick his legs out so he don't have any balance and any way and chance in how to fight you. And then he'll be burning up more energy and the choke will go on quicker, faster. Notice once again, that was not a situation that if I was a boxer, it would have done me any good at all. Okay? Thank you. Now we're going into a scenario quickly where you understand not every staircase has banisters where you can go over. There's two solid walls on each side of you sometimes. So we're going to go through that quickly. But what if there's quickly two people and you're in the middle of the stairs, all of a sudden, boom, one guy's at the top of the stairs, other guy's behind you coming up. You stop, you freeze, you look, all of a sudden, you hear the guy behind you. Bang! This is the situation good where karate now can be used. Because after you kick that guy down them stairs, you must follow him and chase him down and repeatedly start to use your legs to kick him, to shock him. Don't ever go up. Because if you go up, you got a further way to go down. Because if this guy rushes down on you, when he comes and you're trying to go up, now he can use his leg, kick you in your face, and you're going down. So you kick the person who's going, who's coming up. Kick him down, and then rush behind him, and follow him, and finish him off. Now, once again, see people who are trying to stress to you is that you cannot always rely on one system, one art. Sometimes jiu-jitsu don't help you. I'm a jiu-jitsu person. Sometimes you must use karate. Sometimes you must use boxing. You must have a, a, a concept or idea of grappling, close quarter grappling, and then also ground grappling, because there's different types of grappling. You have to train for everything. In this video, we're going to show you defense against a boxer a lot. Working against a boxer. Why? Because it's a Western society. A lot of karate people don't even focus on a boxer. They always do everything from a reverse punch standpoint. And the man is going to step, point, step out, get, get on the eye, hold his hand out, and work it there. This is a Western society. You won't be fighting another martial artist. The guy's going to come with hook punches, combinations, jab. If you don't work from there, then you're fooling yourself. You're not living in today's world. You're living in a fantasy world. You're living somewhere else, some other world. Because this, this is a Western society. Boxing is... This country's number one art, boxing, boxing. And they watch it, they see it on TV, so you have to train and study for it. Now we're going to go into the scenario where you and this individual are on the same level. You're both walking down the stairs together, all of a sudden the guy press you and push. From here, now, quickly, shocking, hitting, you're pushing his body away. This is where jujitsu comes in perfect, four finger yes. lock, finger lock. Right from here, you got full control of this individual from your... Juice just so finger lock, now into your wrist throw. And that person goes down that stairs. Bang, you can shock if you want to, but it's not necessary. Turn that wrist, and there he goes. Let's show you that again. Because it's quick, it's fast, it's simple. You're walking, you then coming out, press, you're going to shock back immediately. As you shock back, you hit the floating hand, the fingers, get it down, turn, and there it goes, wrist throw. Boom, person is down. I could have thrown him. From here, there's no... Time to use anything else but jujitsu. When that man pressed you and held you, boom, automatically, take it back. Boom, elbow shock and boom, groin, hit the floating hand. If I wanted to use a couple of holes to walk him up the stairs, this is what we'll do. If I don't want to use a couple of holes, then my arm bar. If I don't want to use the arm bar, turn it around. My wrist throw. Whatever I want to do, it is right here for me. My son feel lock. My lock's in here, token, take it in, my arm bar, grab him by the hip. Yes. Once again, a choke lock if I wanted to use this, but why would I want to do this when I'm behind? You understand? But we can go into the concept is, once you understand the concept of combination locking, you can go into any lock you hey. choose to use on these stairs instead. Grab him, pull him down the stairs, face first. This is a scenario, watch it. You understand, you notice the other one had a banister where you can go over? In this situation, it's a little bit more safer because what most a man could do if he grabs you is to slam you against the wall and grab you and slam you against the wall and slam you and maybe throw you down the flight of stairs that way. But if you hold on, he's coming with you. So that's not what he really wants to do. But if a man is repeatedly slamming you, slamming you there, 
People try before you get into this scuffle and he throw you down the stairs and you and him both go down the stairs. Try when he slams you and he pulling you across that wall. Push yourself down and sit. Sit. So he doesn't have the ability to throw you down the stairs. And once you're sitting, you can't defend yourself from here. There's still two hands on. And after I sit myself down, from here I'm moving, I'm still attacking the joint arm, and I can kick, and then I come hey, in uh, once again to my arm bar. But I'm safe because I'm sitting. And now hey. I can hold that arm bar right there and take this man down and he stairs from this point. And understand something. Look at where the motion's coming from. If I'm bouncing, I'm pushed, his face, boom, and I sit. I'm in a great shape. This arm is locked. Bam! I attack that arm, and I shock that face. This is the kick right to the face. As I shock the face, turn that wrist lock there. I am good to go. If you have a hard time with it, then you might want to palm shove and then come up. Work your way up to turn him around and still sit now so you can come with your front kick, push him out there. If he holds on to you after your front kick, come in, you grab, now the knees into the face and your punches and your elbows, and then you're shocking, and then you work your way into the arm again. And once again, look, shocking, 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 here. Now if you want to get faster, you can still apply a crescent ah. kick, and a crescent kick can break his arm. Come right over, boom. But why do that? If you have those kicking skills, fine. Attack the ribs, attack the joints. And carry this man. Put you upstairs so you feel safe. Okay, what we're about to show you now is defense against a boxer. Why? Because this is a Western society, that's why. In this society, the number one art is boxing. But martial artists don't have any respect for this fact because they think that their martial art is gonna be effective against a boxer. They don't understand that this is a Western society and in this society, the number one art is boxing. We are not living in Japan or any place else. Over here, we have to guard ourselves against the people who come out of prison, who train in alleys, train in basements, and their number one art of choice is boxing first. And then they now they're gonna add other things because they see television and movies and they pick up from there and so on and so on. But I'm gonna show you that if you are not practicing against a boxer, or for a boxer, you are gonna fall short and find yourself in a serious, serious situation one day because you did not give respect to the number one art of this society, which is boxing. And we're using the equipment to add realism to it. So let me just stop talking and just get on with it and I'll explain while I'm training, while we're training. When you put your hands up in a fighting stance, I don't care if it's this or if you're a karate person and it's this, like most karate guys do, here, you got your hands back here. Your rhythm is reverse punch. It's here, here, and here, or here. A boxer's rhythm is jab, here, move, boom, boom, jab. It's a different rhythm. You can listen on his chest. Listen to his chest and listen to the difference in rhythm. Closest point, closest target. That's why the jab is so effective. We see professional boxers on television who get paid millions and millions of dollars still get caught with the jab. Why? Because it works. And I don't care who you are or what you study. If you come across, come across a guy who knows boxing, you will get caught with the jab. And if you think you're not, take another look at a pro fight and you'll see what I'm talking about. You're fooling yourself. Hands up. Now, just look at this. We're just gonna go back and forth a little bit and watch what happens to your head, to your body, when you put your hands up in the fighting stance and your guy starts swinging off at you, firing off. Oh. Okay, now we're gonna go through a little scenario here so you can see what happens when the jab catches you, how your head moves, it bends your knees, it breaks your balance, it takes you off of your from your main frame, from your solid base, which a lot of martial arts people like to use that solid base. And that solid base ain't there when you're trying to go this way and the man 
catches you with the jab. So we're just going to go back and forth a little bit. You see what I'm talking about? You see when this man slow motion, when this man hits you, you see how your knee buckles, your head go back, or else you stumble backwards? When you stumble backwards, you can't throw no reverse punch because it's not going to be there for you. you can't, he catches you with the jab. You can't throw your what you call lead hand strike because it's not going to be there for you. It just won't be. And you want to know what's even more dangerous? Slow motion. Man jab. You try your rising block, there goes your knockout. Man jab, you try your forearm bar, the man will knock you right out. You jab, you try your low block, that will knock you right out. Because a boxer has rhythm. Rhythm. He's not going to stay there and go and let you come back and not hit you. When he throws that blow and you touch, he hits. Because it's a rhythm. One, two, bam, bam. One, two, bam, bam. That's the way they train. With a rhythm. So we're going to show you what we do to effectively defend ourselves against a guy who box. And it, it doesn't matter if we're moving. It really doesn't matter. If you're standing still or if you're moving. Like maybe we'll dance a little bit. Move over here. See, you know, sometimes guy, you get out there, you're dancing. See, this is fighting situation. This ain't self-defense. This is fighting. When you come in here, so fight in the move, and you're jabbing it, and you're jabbing and you're moving, and you're, oh, and you're jabbing. This is, that is fighting. Fighting. That's not self defense. Now, if you let him fight and you defend yourself, you'll see the difference. Now, I'm going to have him use his jab, and you see the difference. When you, in your frame of mind is, I'm not going to fight. I'm going to defend myself. Self-defense versus fighting. Let him fight. So he put his hands up. And now instead of doing this, which is a fighting stand, which allows him to get that distance again, okay? And we're not even talking about if the guy's a kickboxer or if the guy got some tie training. Because now you're going to get a punch and a kick. And you're really screwed up. I'm just going against a regular guy who's just a regular plain old boxer. So this is fighting. The distance is the same. The opportunity for hurting each other is the same. Who's ever quicker, who's ever faster, who's ever sharper. When I do this, I am defending myself. I am not fighting. Now he can jab all he wants. He'll never, he'll never touch my face. Never come in range to hit me. I don't care how hard he jab. I don't care if you use two hands. I'm keeping myself in position where he cannot hurt me. Now you're saying to yourself, but what the hell good does that do? I'll show you. Now, when he jabs, hold it out, please. Obviously, you force him. You force him to go to what we call hook punches. You'll see that. Hook punch. You'll see that. If he decides you're staying with the jab, your legs are longer than the person's arm. If you can touch him, you can kick him. Now, the difference in the kick is this. Don't forget a person sees and they got rhythm. No one is going to let you hurt them. If you do this, how do you stand, please? The man's going to see that motion to block it. So if you think you're going to come here and go, he's going to block. He's going to see it. Put your hands up. Hey, 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 hey. Every time you do this, he's going to see it to block it. Because all you got to do is drop that hand and then throw that fire, that punch. But here, when you use the back leg and you keep your hands out, he never sees that. Because when he punches, now you catch his focus and you make him. You make him. Boom, stop looking at his ankle. Stop worrying about the feet. And once he starts worrying about his ankle, 
pants on his shin when you got boots on and you're kicking him so you can see. Here, with the foot inverted, not the toes. Turn it around, the inside of your foot. You make him now pay attention to the lower half of his body. When he looks down, because you kicked him once, and he start looking at that leg, looking at that foot, now you can close the distance. Now you can close the distance effectively and safely. So it's this versus this. See the this? This versus this. So now we're in fighting position. This. And when he fires off, boom, you kick that shit. Boom, you kick that shit. And then you slap. And you close the distance. This isn't maybe. This isn't, I think it'll work. Try it. Don't take my word for it. It'll work. It makes a hell of a lot better sense than this. Because now, anything could happen. Here. But back here, you're giving yourself options. Once you get that man looking at the bottom of his leg, then boom, now you can get the front kick off to the groin. And still, keep your hands up to smack the hands down to now close the distance. Okay. Watch it, even if you dance a little bit. We're going to try to dance a little bit, stay inside our perimeter here. And I want him to try to fire off on me with the jab and left and right. And watch how I use these legs effectively. Okay? See, I stay on my feet. I keep my hands up. Man can't touch me. Boom! I'm moving. I'm shut. Boom! I'm moving. Boom! Boom! I'm moving. Hey, boom! There you go. Hey, boom! I'm moving. You see how the, he buckles? He's moving. I'm moving. I'm moving. Boom! Right there. I close the distance. And then, keep my hands out. Keep my hands out. Uh, hands out. Boom! Hey. Close the distance. Again. If you see what I'm trying to talk about and try to explain to you, as long as you work low and high and control his focus, you have an opportunity boom, to close the distance. Okay. Thank you. Good. Good.